Hey hey, and welcome to the first Retro Hour on my channel. This is a new video concept I've been playing around with for a while, where I go back and play a retro game for an hour, talking about the good, the bad, and the downright ugly of that game. So I wanted to go back and talk about the original Tekken. Tekken was released onto the arcades in late 1994, and by mid-1995 it started turning up on the original PlayStation. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, why am I looking at Galaga if we're talking about the original Tekken? Well the answer is, Namco bundled this in with Tekken as a boot up game. So when you put the disc into the drive, you'd get to play a bit of Galaga before you actually got to dive into Tekken. I think you can unlock characters through this, it's been a long time, I can't fully remember, but it's an interesting concept and it's one that I kind of wish was more apparent in modern games. But once you get through that, you can actually get into the main game. Now the thing with Tekken is that you always get an introduction video. This shows off the characters, it kind of gives you a flavour for the story. Now. At Tekken 1, there isn't really much of a story going on outside of what's written down in the instruction booklet that comes with the game. So what you're really seeing here is a montage of all the cool characters that you get to fight as in this game. There's Michelle, running with an axe that's kind of dangerous. There's Law, one of the most badass characters I'm sure you will agree. One of the problems with Tekken 1 that you'll see as we're kind of playing through is there isn't that much in the way of variety and it ends up hurting the game a lot when you kind of go back to experience it from a modern time because the amount of content in this game is incredibly wafer thin and you'll see that when we head to the main menu in a second although first things first we've kind of got to get through this demo match here Yes, there's only two modes for us to actually play in, arcade mode and two player mode. This is as bare bones as you can get and unfortunately the original Tekken does not have any of the luxuries that have become pretty much standard across the fighting genre. You can change some of the options and customise the experience a tiny bit, but realistically there's only 8 characters for you to start out with here, which is a pretty small roster even by 1995 standards. As we load into our first match here between Michelle and Paul, you can see that this is actually a pretty good looking game. Sure, it's not got all the bells and whistles that, you know, modern gaming has, but by 1995 standards, getting this level of game, this level of quality onto a PlayStation console was pretty mind blowing and it's one of the reasons that Tekken took off in such a big way. I also kicked Paul's ass there, which makes me incredibly happy. Gameplay is pretty bare, but still fun compared to what you would probably get from a modern Tekken game. There's no sidestepping, you can't pause to look at the move list, and in terms of health, there really isn't that much you can do other than beat your opponent to lose their health. You can't regain it, and you can't use any of the special abilities that the modern Tekken games have added for convenience of new players. It also needs to be said that if you're playing on your own, this is going to be a very different experience to those who play against the computer on a regular basis. Because I'm not saying that the AI in this game cheats, but what I am saying is that it has a very uncanny ability to know what you're about to do. And let's just leave it at that for now, shall we? We're fighting Martial Law here. Martial Law is probably one of the more well-known characters in the Tekken series and has appeared in pretty much all of the games. I say pretty much, he didn't appear in Tekken 3, he was replaced by Forest Law in that game. It's very easy to get confused between the two laws, but it's pretty simple. This is the original and the one that appears in the most games. But yes, this is Tekken 1 in all of its glory. I like that we're just in stadium. We're not in a particular stadium, we're just in stadium. And it looks like a baseball stadium as well. I'm kind of glad we got Law out of the way there. Law is one of the more annoying characters that you can come up against if you get him on the higher, diff the higher stages. I am not a fan of Jack. So Jack is a recurring character, but with a slight dip twist on that. Basically in all of the Tekken games, Jack will turn up, but he'll turn up with the numbered iteration of whichever game he's in. So for example, in Tekken 2, it's Jack 2. And I think in, in Tekken 3, is it Jack 3? 
And then from that point on, Jack kind of loses a lot of his personality and just kind of becomes a generic grunt. Oh my god. So the thing with Jack is that he hits like a freight train, but he also moves like a tank. So if you are able to kind of get in and get out, you can hit him pretty effectively. The problem is if he starts hitting you, you're going to lose health very quickly. You can see with this stage as well, there's an attempt to try and have a sort of day-night cycle going on. It's very rudimentary for the time, but back in the day this was quite impressive to see on a PlayStation 1. Okay, I'm going to go for the grapples here. If I go for the grapples, I think I might have a better chance against this thing. If you're curious about the backstory to all of these characters, you'll need the instruction manual that comes with the game because all of the character details are actually in there. It's something that these early Tekken games really overlook. They don't really put much emphasis on the actual bios of the characters in the game. <laughs> nice. As said, as the series moves forward and once it kind of decides which direction it wants things to move in, it, it's funny we're talking about this while Kazuya has just showed up. Kazuya plays a massive role in the story of Tekken as it kind of progresses. He actually becomes the antagonist of the series, I'd argue. Because in Tekken 8, he's basically trying to destroy the world. He's part of the Mishima family, and as the games kind of progress, the story gets very convoluted and takes a lot of twists and turns. I am being cheap as heck here, by the way. I am I'm trying my absolute best to not lose this. By using grapples, I don't think I'm gonna. No. The way he was approaching me there, I knew as soon as I tried to go for an attack, he was gonna do something like that. For an early 3D fighter, you have to say that this is pretty fun, especially when you compare this to other 3D fighters that were showing up around this time. The graphics here are particularly detailed for what you're getting. Obviously, you know, with 2024 vision, we can say that, no, no, this does not look revolutionary, but on PlayStation 1, seeing this running was quite the amazing feat. But one apiece here. I'm just gonna grapple. If you see me grappling like this, it's because that's the only way I can think to sort of get around the dodgy AI. In Tekken 1, a lot of these characters are just kind of here to fill archetypes. So, Nina Williams is a particularly interesting character to discuss with the Tekken series. She's kind of been the face of the game for a hot minute, in particular around the PS2 era. She got her own spin-off game called Death by Degrees. Now, if you've never played that game, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not particularly great. It sort of dives into her backstory and... You get the feeling that Namco really saw Nina as a potential tentpole for the series, away from the Mishima family. But in more recent games, she's just kind of been like a generic bad guy who's working under Kazuya. So yeah, she's around in the modern games as well. She's also hyper annoying because like some of her attacks can really hit you quickly and hard. In these early Tekken games in particular, it doesn't quite have the flowing movement of the modern Tekken games, so you kind of have to readjust yourself when you're coming to experience these. Things are a bit slower, and especially with stuff like that, you might think you're just out of range, but unfortunately, no, you're not. Well, we try that. My personal history with the Tekken series actually goes all the way back to Tekken 1. We actually got it with the original PlayStation and we played the heck out of this. This was such a beloved game. This and Soul Blade were the two fighting games that we would regularly put on and we'd have competitions, we'd have, you know, winner stays on. The core experience here is just really fun and 
going back to experience it, it is kind of basic here. Like, you can see that I'm going for all these grapple moves because this is the only way I can really think to kind of get around the AI being very stingy with me. Take that, Nina. Straight to the face. You'll also notice that the stages are not proper 3D. Basically what happens is the plane we're on just kind of morphs around us and what you're seeing in the background is pretty stable but to the sides we basically just end up scrolling along endlessly so if you keep going you'll just keep moving along. These aren't really arenas, they're more just sort of flat 2D planes that you're fighting along. I'm very surprised I beat Yoshimitsu so easily though. Yoshimitsu usually kicks my backside. Yoshimitsu is another one who has become pretty iconic from the series. Yoshimitsu's actually become that big that like he shows up in other series like the Soul Calibur series as a regular character so I mean that's pretty cool. <laughs> when he when he dropped his leg there I knew there'd be a chance to maybe get a kick in. Michelle is a lot slower than I remember. I, I used to be able to pull off a lot of great moves but obviously having not played with her in any of the previous Tekken games in the last few years it's, it's very difficult to kind of come back and try to relearn the moves. King is another one who is still in the series but with an asterisk after him. Basically um, after Tekken 2 King gets killed off and his King persona is sort of picked up by one of his protégés. I am actually getting my ass handed to me here. King is not playing around here. King is definitely trying to end me here. Another thing I kind of like about this game is that there's such a variety in... Thanks for that, King. You will lose a lot, by the way, on this. I'm playing on the normal difficulty, and the AI can get really nasty in the later stages. If you try playing on hard, good luck for you, because the AI will just pull out every little trick and every little cheat it can to sort of help itself to winning. I also forgot how slow the characters are to get up here. When you get knocked to the floor in this Tekken, it actually takes like a second or two for you to be able to actually get yourself back up. It can be a bit annoying at times because when you're trying really hard not to sort of get attacked, you're kind of left wide open and some of the characters in this game can hit you on the floor. I'm trying to draw him over here. I'm hoping that if, if I draw him over here, he'll make, he'll do something and I'll be able to hit him. And that's why I don't like going on the attack in these early Tekken games too much because it's, it's so difficult to sort of anticipate what the AI is going to do. And they've usually got at least two or three moves that they'll love to pull out, like this drop kick here. If you're not prepared for that, like it's just going to wipe your health out. And also, once they start chaining combos together, you might as well let it let it go because the health bars in these games are quite small compared to what they are in later Tekken games. <sighs> King. I mean, that was a sweet missile drop kick, but like, I did not need that right in my face. And we start off with him kneeing me in the face. Lovely. The thing with Michelle is that she does get replaced by Julia in the later games and Julia has got like a very small fan base because every time they put her up for DLC she gets snapped up. So Michelle kind of lives on but ultimately not as Michelle. And with the way I'm fighting here I'm not surprised she takes retirement. Can you imagine the logistics of telling two people from across the world, hey, you've got to go and fight on a frozen iceberg. Yeah, 
you can definitely tell this is an arcade game arcade games tend to have very aggressive ai with fighting games and you can see that the ai in this is designed to antagonize the player and just be aggressive not them complaining because when you've got so little content in the game you need there to be a challenge and it's it's oh i did really well there that's the funny thing about tekken you can have a really bad fight and then in the next one you'll just have, you'll get a random perfect and you're like where did where was this like 30 seconds ago i do feel sorry for king though having to fight on this iceberg with no shirt i was trying to go for a flying kick there to take him out oh he's gonna Oh, that was lovely. I missed the grapple, but I got the kick while he was still in the air. Very lucky there, but I'm very happy with how that turned out. So once you reach stage 8 in Tekken 1 in arcade mode, you get to fight against the sub-boss for each character. And the sub-boss basically, usually is a mirror of one of the other characters. And the hyper-aggressive, as you can see here, Kunimitsu has a lot of DNA shared with Yoshimitsu. And I do believe they're still in the series. I, I don't think they're in the base game for Tekken 8, but they did appear as DLC in Tekken 7, so there's every chance they'll turn up at some point. Basically, if there's any story around these characters, usually these sub-bosses are the ones that kind of are here to sort of tie that together. And it's more obvious with some characters than others. I'm not quite sure why Michelle gets Kunimitsu when Yoshimitsu would have probably made for a much more interesting... He, I was being played there. That low kick was absolutely disgusting, but I approve of it very much. You can see here just how sort of aggressive the AI is like it's anticipating everything that I'm trying to do so I'm just gonna have to go for the grapples here when Kunimitsu goes for those free kicks there I'm going in because I don't think the AI is anticipating me rushing in definitely anticipating me though though with that grapple I think we're fighting in Venice here, or Venezia, as it calls it. Ow. Oh, I'm going to lose, aren't I? Oh, I'm going to lose, yes. It knew that I had low health, and that's why it went for that low kick there. It knew I couldn't defend against it. Welcome to stage 8, everyone. <laughs> We're playing on normal difficulty here, but you can see that the AI is pretty brutal when it wants to be. Sometimes it's not this bad, sometimes it is this bad. I remember, we're only playing on normal here. If you turn on the hard difficulty, then good luck to you. Michelle, we're going to have to rethink our game plan here because we seem to have gotten stuck against Kun Kunimitsu here. It is interesting that there are some people who use weapons in this. You would have thought they would have fit better in Soul Blade, which was developed around this time, but, you know, not the case. Right, that kick to the head there seems to have helped me out a fair bit. Please, I just want to win this. I just want to get through this battle. You're going to have to let me have the grapple spam here, guys. I know, I know, it's cheap and dirty, but it's the only way I think I'm going to get past Kunimitsu here. Excellent. And we got a perfect as well. Oh, goodness me. We did not deserve that perfect. That was dirty and cheap, but a win is a win in Tekken. So we're here fighting in Chicago against Heihachi who 
is the final boss for the original Tekken game. You can unlock him. I've forgotten how you do that. I think it might be through the Gallagher game. But Heihachi is basically the big baddie of this game. And it's interesting because in Tekken 2, he's actually one of the starting characters that you can have. And Kazuya is treated as the big bad of the game. Well, alongside Angel and Devil. Uh, you know, I've had enough of your rubbish here actually we're going for the grapple spam here i used to know all the combos for michelle but this is what happens when you don't play these games for a good number of years you come back and you just forget and it doesn't help that there's no one like michelle basically in the modern tekken games Okay, we can do this, we can do this. No, we can't do this, he just power bombed me onto that cement. <sighs> that was a nasty punch. He just reached over and he just said to Michelle, see you later. So if I'm being a bit quiet here, I'm just focusing on trying to get through this absolute nightmare situation. <laughs> hey Hachi, please, you don't have to do this to me. The funny thing is, when I played Tekken 8 online recently, they've recently re released Hey Hachi as DLC in that game. And I swear that he's like the most popular character because he's the only thing you'll see in the ranked online matches. Oh, I'm going to be cheap. Can I survive? I can. I don't want to hear anyone in the comments saying that was cheap. Riding out the time is a legitimate tactic and I will not hear otherwise. Although I think I may have annoyed Heihachi with that one. <laughs> I don't think he's going to forget that quite so soon. A win by any nature is a win. Yes! It was not pretty by the end, I will be completely honest with you, but we did it and that's all I care about with Michelle. So one of the things as well with the arcade mode in these Tekken games is you get these fun little cinematics and they make absolutely no sense if you haven't read the story blurbs in the manual. Like who's that? Who's waiting for Michelle at the ranch? Look at that. Look at that CGI smile. And the way she's running. My gosh. And that is Michelle's arcade mode. Honestly speaking, I, I'm quite scared at how much I've forgotten about Michelle's moveset. I used to be really good with her. And playing her now, it was really, really a... Rough ride, I'm not going to lie. Ugh. Before everyone kind of agreed that having name selection screens that were, you know, standardised, we end up with this. How are we done in the rankings? Oh, we've, we came in at just under 15 minutes. You can see that the default rankings are like 55 minutes, so... That makes me feel slightly better about how long that took. The nice thing as well is that once you've completed arcade mode with a character, you actually unlock the sub-boss to play yourself. You don't actually get a cinematic with them in Tekken 1. In Tekken 1, it's completely bare bones in kind of how those characters are treated. They're basically just treated as alt characters. As you can see there, I've dropped the fight round numbers to 1. Normally when I play arcade mode in these Tekken games, I intentionally drop the round count to one just because if you get a lucky win against some of the more difficult ones, it means you just move on to the next character. Whereas if there's two rounds, you've got to repeat that and it can take quite a while as you saw with Michelle there. So I'm going to play with King here. King is actually really, really fun to play as in my opinion. King's got a bunch of combos as you can see there able to really string them together his punching game is pretty fab 
Although in these early games, like they really lean into the fact that he is like an actual, you know, tiger, which I'm not sure was fully necessary, and they kind of pull back on that a tiny bit in the future games. That's a suplex. So in case you haven't caught on yet, King is basically a wrestler, a pro wrestler, and obviously in Japan, pro wrestling is a big deal, which is where this game's from, so he's here to really cater to that crowd. Once you drop the round counter down to one, it's actually a lot less intimidating to make your way through the arcade mode here. Imagine being on holiday at Windermere and finding out that these two were just fighting right next to your holiday spot. The thing with Yoshimitsu is he can be really fast, really, really fast. As you can see there, I waited for him to do his little kicky thing and then I was just in like grease lightning. Sometimes with these Tekken fights, it's just about waiting for the right opportunity to get in and undermine the AI. If you've never played Tekken, Law is pretty much a nightmare to deal with. The thing with Law is that he's very quick, based off Bruce Lee, and of course that means that like he gets all the cool martial arts moves. And he moves really quickly as well, so not only does he hit pretty hard, he also has the advantage of being able to smack you multiple times. The reason I'm staying away from him is because he's got a grapple move, that grapple move, that is pretty annoying. It basically is unskippable and you, it does quite a bit of damage, as you can see. As mentioned, the AI in Tekken 1 is particularly aggressive and what it ends up doing is it can feel unfair sometimes the way that the AI just sort of seemingly knows what you're about to do and acts on that information. Law, I am not here for this. Can you just like go away please? Law will not let me have this win. He is determined to like make me come back and fight him again. <sighs> Even to this day, Law is a nightmare to deal with in online matches for me personally. Probably my least favourite character when I see it pop up on the character screen, so knowing that like Law was always such a pain in the ass is pretty fun. Okay. Can I? Okay. I got very lucky there. <laughs> For some reason, he stopped defending and he gave me a window to smack him in the face with King's Fists, which doesn't seem like a good life choice on Law's part there. As I was sort of talking about earlier as well, in Tekken 1, there seems to be kind of more of a push for realistic settings. We're here at the Angkor Wat, and the thing is, it's a very specific place to kind of come and recreate in a video game. In the modern Tekken games, there's less emphasis on real life places and more sort of just trying to make them look spectacular. I don't like Jack. I don't like most of these characters to be honest, they're pretty annoying to fight against. The funny thing with the original Tekken game here is I don't think you could get away with releasing a game like this in the modern era. There's just not enough in this package and it's kind of surprising that this series took off in the way they did when you kind of look at what's actually here. The gameplay itself very impressive, the graphics very impressive, but there really isn't much meat on the bones and even by Tekken 2 they'd realized this was a problem because Tekken 2 is stuffed to the gills with mods like Team Battle and Survivor. All those things kind of show up there but they definitely would have benefited this game had they taken the time to put them in. 
There's not much to really say about this fight because Michelle isn't putting up much of a fight at all. Maybe she just wants to go back to her ranch early. I don't blame her. I would want to fight King Ivor. So here's a good example of something that Tekken does with a few of its characters. It has alts that are not quite the same character but just enough there to kind of give story to the characters that you're playing as. Armor King and King are kind of rivals and you wouldn't know that from playing this although Armor King just whooped me so that's nice. Thank you for that Armor King. I also kind of like the notion that we've come here to the Acropolis and this you know amazingly beautiful ruined site someone was like hey why don't we just have like this random bloody fight out in front of it how did he actually get the permit for this this is me also by the way distracting from the fact that armor king is actually crushing me here I'm backing away here because I don't want to get suckered into something like that but unfortunately I made the mistake of moving forward and Armour King was just ready to strike. One of the annoying things about this game as well is that you can't grapple from behind so if a character sort of turns around in front of you unlike in the modern Tekken games where you can grapple and something happens in this one it just kind of acts like you didn't do it it is a bit frustrating not gonna lie i think they fixed that by tekken 3. hey hachi i haven't got time to deal with you man we are just going to whoop you here just take a knee to the face and let me have the w please thank you heihachi giving over the keys to his kingdom to a king It's kind of the wonkiness of this that adds charm to these CGI screens. Pretend you don't notice the blue outline around those kids and the fact that they were blue screened into this. You can see that as well, once you take away the second round on fights it does mean you can speed through arcade mode a bit easier if you're aiming to just to unlock the characters it's definitely the way to go in my opinion and of course we did crush our previous time largely down to the fact that you know we did half the battles to get there but history's not going to remember that because this ranking table doesn't show that. What should we do next? You can see Armor King is there. I'm going to break with my own sort of traditions here. I never play as Jack normally, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to give him a whirl here. I'm not a fan of Jack purely because Jack is so slow and slow, so cumbersome to actually control that by the time we get to like the stage 6 or 7 I'm anticipating we are not even going to be able to hit the opponents. Although poor Yoshimitsu there got absolutely thumped back into the Stone Age and Jack's trying to send himself there by punching his own chest like that. <laughs> There is definitely a charm to this version of Tekken though and as you saw there we couldn't grapple from behind 
Again, a very frustrating limitation. Again, no one gave King a shirt before we came up to the glacier here. King is going for the win. King got the win. Again, the great example of the fact that with Jack, I just wasn't able to hit the opponent because by the time he loads up his punches, they were able to get in quicker punches and it kind of leaves Jack in a very vulnerable spot. Unless you're able to dominate opponents, Jack becomes a bit of a liability. Although I have to say that free combo punch there is pretty tasty. I like how Jack just picks them up and dumps them right on their heads. Like, no actual concern for their long-term health there. You'll notice with the Kazuya and the Mishima characters in general, they do have electricity that kind of makes them stand out a tiny bit from the other characters. Fancy meeting you up here, Michelle. What are you doing? Oh, now Michelle turns up. You can see how Michelle, though, was ducking underneath my kicks. Luckily, that fighting spirit did not translate into a W for Michelle. We're about 35 minutes into this retro hour, and I have to say that it's actually really fun coming back to play this version of Tekken. Once you kind of accept the limitations of what isn't here, and the fact that, like, you know, the Tekken series has moved along in gameplay style. This is really, really fun. There's still a very fun core experience here. And absolutely smashing lore there only makes me like this even more. There's definitely a sense of quirkiness to this game. And it really kind of shines through and really helps to kind of paper over some of the more obvious flaws. We are absolutely beefing here. Maybe I was wrong about Jack all these years. Okay, so that's how you do the big splat. One of Jack's special moves is that he basically falls on top of his opponent, which I can imagine is quite terrifying if you're the one underneath. Good on Nina there for flipping me over. As you can see in the replay here, Nina goes low and unfortunately Jack being a giant pile of metal, he wasn't really able to do anything with that. And this is kind of what I was fearing with Jack, as soon as we come up against a nimble, high staged opponent, things are going to start to unravel very quickly because Jack doesn't really have much in his arsenal to stop this kind of thing from happening. All I can really do is try to hit her from a distance, but as you can see there, when we go for the crush there, it takes a while to get up, and if we don't get them underneath us, we're basically kind of left wide open. She could have really had fun with me there. Please don't let me lose this. I'm trying to go for that big swingy punch thing, but it's not happening. <gasps> Oh, okay, that one stung. I should have had that one, to be fair. That was a mistake. I really shouldn't go for that falling move anymore. I think that at this stage, it's more impractical to use it. I think I should try using the other grapple move. And then I go right for it anyway. It's mostly about chipping away at health at this point. I'm just kind of hoping that I can turn the tide of this battle around. The idea was fine there, but the execution was terrible. Jack was facing the wrong way, left himself wide open to being smacked in the back of the head there.
Nina here is absolutely destroying me. And there's not much I can really do. One of the problems with Tekken 1 as well is that you there is no actual move list in the game. So whereas in modern fighting games you can press start and have a quick glance at the moves you can potentially do in a combo, here you're kind of left to your own devices and you kind of have to figure it out. Okay, I think Nina is trying to prove a point here. I can imagine the people in in this dojo are just sat watching from the window like, oh my god, that robot is so stupid. That robot is so garbage. I will not let Nina beat me, however. I will not let be Nina beat me. I'm going to have to go cheap here, I think. The only way I'm getting through this fight is to grapple Nina and just rip away her health piece by piece. But Nina heard that, that plan and was like, no, I'm going to beat you anyway. <sighs> okay. We've got this. We've got this. We've not got this. Okay, we might have this. Pro Nina into that building over there. I think that might help us. The phrase get good really is applying to me here. What I'm doing, when she gets up and when she sort of does her weird kick to react, that's the moment I'm choosing to get in. Because it seems like the AI doesn't know how to block me when I'm stepping in that quickly. Nina is done. And here is Paul. I think at this point, if I have any aspirations of getting to Heihachi, I'm just going to have to make use of the grapple moves pretty aggressively here. I'm beginning to understand why I never liked playing with Jack. Don't get me wrong, if you can learn his combos and if you can sort of work around the slow speed, then he's probably really great to use, but for me personally, he's just a bit too slow. And all these other characters just seem to be able to get in like this. There's not much I can really do to stop it. I got in a cheeky little punch there while he was unable to block and I think that was very lucky. If you want a sign of just how maybe lazy they were feeling when they were making this game, here is P-Jack. Which is basically Jack but with a drill for an arm. Well, he heard me insult him and P-Jack decided to show me off, which I appreciate very much. When looking at this game as well, it's important to have some context. You have to remember that arcade ports of games like this were usually pretty compromised when they showed up on consoles, but because this was designed with the PlayStation in mind, and because when it released into arcades, it used an arcade board that was basically just a PlayStation console, it was able to be ported across very, very effectively. I would probably argue that might explain why there's so few mods in this, because they probably figured when they were doing this that people would be more in awe of the experience being not compromised. You have to remember that there were other 3D fighters and polygon fighters around at this time, but I would argue this is probably the best looking of the bunch. Okay, I'm going to have to focus for a second here because I need to be P-Jack. Because P-Jack is showing me up here pretty aggressively. I do like how when he picks me up he tries to activate his little drill thing. Like, just stick that through Jack's head. That'll go down a treat, I think. Oh, 
We're going to run out of time here. Nope, we're not. P-Jack was like, nope, you're not getting that timeout victory. Of course it would be a Jack variant that would drag me down and show up my lack of skills with Jack. I don't know why, but he seems to be able to pull off a lot of moves that I just cannot make happen. I'm seeing way too many perfects here for my liking. My Tekken Ego cannot take this. Okay, I got in there very lucky. We've got a nice lead here. Let's see if I can make this count for something. Oh wow, those punches landed. Please let this be it. Please, please. Yes! Left himself open when he was going for the swings there. That is Tekken 1 in a nutshell. Sometimes you just come up against an opponent that will absolutely savage you. Why is Heihachi so easy compared to P-P-Jack? I don't understand. I'm just going to stay on the floor there. I was waiting for Heihachi to do his thing. I'm actually trying to run the clock down. Just in case, like, Heihachi tries any crazy ideas. I did not expect that to work. It worked. I always seem to be able to pull off the cheesiest moves against Heihachi. Jack's ending is kind of sad because after winning the Tekken tournament, he's just decommissioned and they basically use his battle experience and I'm assuming memories and all that stuff to program the next generation of Jacks, which we know in Tekken 2 will be the Jack 2s, but the Jack that you've just been playing as is basically sent to the scrap heap, which kind of sad when you think about it. That's not really the motivation that you would have thought you'd want to complete the Tekken tournament, but you know, hey all. Tekken 1 is definitely a very interesting sort of moment in gaming because when this landed, it received a lot of great reviews from outlets in Japan and around the world. People loved the visuals, people thought the combat style was a bit different when it landed in the arcades, but it worked really well on the PlayStation. And the thing is, once Tekken 2 came out, it pretty much superseded this game in absolutely every capacity. And therefore, Tekken 2 is really a lot of people's first entry point for the Tekken series. So as good as this game was back in the day, it's generally kind of overlooked because its sequel just kind of did so much better. Speaking of doing things better, this is Yoshimitsu. Now I kind of introduced him earlier on. He is very much a staple of the Tekken series, but also of other series like Soul Calibur. He's one of those characters that turns up pretty much where he's needed and his sword makes him really stand out in this game. Now, there is an attack that he does that is very devastating and I'm going to see if I can get away with doing it at some point here. Basically, if it takes a long time for it to load up and the AI always seems to kind of know when you're about to do it because it'll start backing away. If you can hit it though, it does a lot of damage. But Yoshimitsu is fast, nimble and has a lot of sick kicks. So, he's definitely one that, if you can master, is a very impressive character. Unfortunately, you do have to master some of these characters. Ah, oh, we just missed there. You can see there that Nina figured out what I was doing and made a hasty retreat. One thing as well that I haven't spoken about yet, but I do think is worthy of praise, 
the music in this game. The music is really catchy and even though it's not like super super memorable like some of the later tracks in the Tekken series, I think it does a really really cool job of sort of setting the tone for some of these levels. This is actually a great example. Monument Valley here has a very atmospheric and very sort of appropriate music that really does kind of make this stage feel very unique. Which is fine because all you're hearing is the sound of Yoshimitsu's bones smashing against the, the sand there. It's always law. It's always law that's ruining my momentum in these arcade mode hunts. Why did I go for that? I I knew that was a bad idea and I still went for it. I, I don't understand sometimes. Like, I make really bad decisions in the moment with some of these Tekken games. Take the butt of my sword to your face and it makes me feel better. I swear if he beats me here. Okay, he didn't. Another thing about Yoshimitsu as well is that he basically changes his style every game so you'll never see this version of Yoshimitsu in any of the future games because he basically starts changing up his style pretty aggressively as you move through the games. I've just got to be very careful. I say that and then I get absolutely wrecked on the low punches there. What I need to do, I just need to be more careful when fighting off against Jack here. You can see that I'm grappling because it stops him dead in his tracks. Big Metal Lummox can't even fight me off, although I say that and then he drops his feet right in my face. See what I mean about Jack hitting hard? He doesn't hit fast, but when he starts hitting he hits and he does not stop. I'm not going to win this. I'll be very surprised if I get a W out of this. No. I had, I got very desperate there. I, the, the computer knew what I was about to do and went for the low kick there. I almost got the sword strike in there. That was just me sort of messing around. I, I didn't think it was actually going to go anywhere. I would love to be able to show you the sword strike, but unfortunately it just seems like I'm, I'm just not going to get that opportunity. Another thing that they change in the future Tekken games is once you run into someone and knock them down, you can actually... You can actually deal them damage by punching them, or in Yoshimichi's case, you just sort of stab them with your sword. Stage 5 Jack here is being a torment. Yeah, that was, that was not going to work, was it? <laughs> Jack the punishing me for having the audacity to go for a sword strike. This is the absolute nightmare in Tekken 1. Just being absolutely bodied by a Jack that will not let you get a move in. My best bet is to probably go for grapples, but I was trying to actually put some combos together and show off Yoshimitsu a bit, but I don't think that's going to happen here. <laughs> well, he left himself open there. I kind of had to go for the grapples. I'm waiting for the window to open up to hit him properly. Right, he jumped right into me there and I had to take that opportunity because he was probably going to smack me with those fists if I gave him a chance. And of course Paul's here to just rub salt into the wound. So when they get up off the ground, if they punch, there's like a moment afterwards where you can get a pretty clean strike in to get a grapple like that. So I'm looking out for that now when I see opponents getting up because the AI doesn't seem to respond immediately to them standing up. Let's see if Michelle can actually be a decent challenge here. Oh, 
Oh yes, we got a sword strike. So the damage done by the sword strike can vary, but as you saw there, that was a nice half health, which at this stage I will take. I think that sword strike set the tone for that one, didn't it? So we know that Kunimitsu was Michelle's sub boss. This doesn't make any sense to me. Surely this would have made more sense as Michelle's fight because two swordsmen fighting off would have been more theme appropriate. Doesn't matter. They are definitely not dressed for this encounter. That's all I'm going to say. Oh. Oh god, okay. I don't remember this character actually. This is one of those characters who I'm sure I've played against, but I actually have no memories of them. So this is basically a jack, but it's, it's just another jack, isn't it? But it moves a bit faster. It even has the sound, the jack sound clips. Oh. Oh, oh, that stomp. Careful, we need to get off this glacier in one piece. That was more hopeful than anything else. At this stage, I'm just doing that in the slight hope that the AI doesn't know what I'm about to do. That stomp is nasty because I don't know if you've been able to tell, whenever you get knocked to the ground, there's like a second or two where you're not able to get up straight away, so it gives them an opportunity to kind of get a nasty strike in on you. And I know that Nina likes to sort of jump on her opponents and smack them on the floor. Yoshimitsu there doing it for, doing it for the team. <laughs> Yoshimitsu going to places <laughs> that I'm pretty sure Yoshimitsu will want to forget about, but the job is done. As rough as that fight ended up being, I was able to make my way through. That's a power bomb. Well, it's nice to know that Hey Hachi's got my number here. I just okay. Is the comeback on? Oh, okay. The combat might be on here. Okay. Are you telling me there's a chance? There is not a chance. <laughs> the sword strike there gave me a false sense of confidence. The fact that I got that in on a Heihachi, though, is pretty impressive for me. I'm very happy with that. Oh, can you stop, Heihachi? No, it's not going to happen twice. I, I had to try my luck there. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Hey, Hachi was not impressed with me trying twice, so I deserve that, I feel. Uh, hey, Hachi, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? So, I suspect the only way I'm going to win this is with grapple spammings. Oh, come on. No, come on. Knee to the face. So we win with a knee to the face. We send Heihachi home crying. And Yoshimitsu takes home the prize money. But he's not keeping it for himself, as you'll see in his cutscene here. He's actually going to be giving it away to all of these lovely people and Law, who is apparently in this cutscene. And I have no idea why. It's never explained why Law is here. He just looks really happy to be getting all this money. There's a dollar bill that just landed on his head. And Yoshimitsu rides off into the sunset while Law stuffs his pockets full of notes. But that is the end of my retro hour with the original Tekken game. And I have to say, this has been really fun to go back and experience. Tekken 1 is one of those games that was very quickly superseded by its sequel that pretty much did everything better. But what is here is still very fun and there's a very solid 
core gameplay loop. It doesn't look terrible for the time, sounds great, and in my opinion, this one holds up pretty well, in my opinion. So yeah, what did you think of the original Tekken? Let me know in the comments, did you ever play this back in the day? And thank you so, so much for watching.